Welcome to Envision CAD's technical tip for this month. What we're going to look at is displaying crossing and projected features in a profile view. And for this, we're going to use uh, the graphics that are shown up here. And this brown dashed line represents an underground feature, in this case a 42 inch CMP, that's in our DTM. And the end product we're shooting for is to display a crossing feature. Which, so it's the profile of that pipe as it crosses underneath the center line and the projected element as it would lay on the profile view if it was um, projected perpendicularly back to the alignment. And we are going to create a profile based on that alignment. So let me open view number two back up here and we are going to delete that because we'll just start from scratch. And we'll get rid of all the graphics. So. A number of things have to happen before this can take place. Number one, the feature has to be in a DTM. And we can still use the standard Inroads Explorer dialog box. Um, this is Select Series 2. I'm going to start using the taskbar menus. And I've got it pinned here, uh, or not pinned, so it automatically collapses and hides. So I'll just use the uh, pullout menus here. So if I go to uh, evaluate the properties of the features that we're going to um, to be showing in the profile. I'm just going to dynamically or graphically select this culvert. I can see that it is a brake line but it is excluded from triangulation and it's a 42 inch RCP. So that's the key on that. The other key thing that goes with this is the feature style that's assigned with it that controls uh, the display properties and how it does look when it becomes displayed. And if we want to chase that down, we can do that right now. We can see that that's the feature style assigned to it. If I go to Edit Style, it'll take us to uh, Style Manager. It's the same as picking Tools, Edit Style. And we can see for this particular feature name, the settings Enable Projected and Crossing Display, both in Cross Section and in Profile. If I go to the symbology leaf it tells me the named symbology it's going to use if I select edit it's the same as going to tools name symbology editor if I look in here we have profile line text and point we're really interested in the point that's the crossing point I'm going to double click on it to open it to edit and what we can see is going to happen is when it crosses it's going to place a cell it happens to be a cell that has a one inch diameter the level it goes to, and we're blowing that cell up uh, 42 times. You know, so that's how we get our 42 inch pipe. So just keep that in mind. That's really the critical part is how that uh, crossing or sectioned portion of that pipe appears. So we'll just close out of here and get down to business. So what I want to do is I want to create a profile and I'm just going to do it along a short segment of my alignment here. And I'm going to put that profile up in view number two. So I go to my taskbar here, we're going to uh, go to profile and we're going to create a profile. And we're going to uh, profile through uh, my existing ground DTM which contains that pipe and also the design surface. So we've got other settings here that we can do, I've got them all set up for this demonstration. If I hit apply, I just need to pick my profile origin and it uh, displays on the screen. Now one thing I meant to uh, display there is if I look at the include I have crossing and projected features off right now. Keep that in mind. And I goofed up. I should have changed my global scale factor before I created this. Obviously you can't see any text. So let's say we're going to create this profile at 20 scale. So I've got my global scale factors dialog open here. Let's just recreate that profile quick. So now that looks a little bit more reasonable. Now the reason I have the crossing and projected features off, more so crossing than projected, is I don't want that pipe scaled up uh, 20 times. Remember it was a one inch cell. Uh, we've already decided it's going to be expanded 42 times. I don't want to also multiply that by 20. It'd be a gigantic pipe. So the process for that is to update the profile. So I'm going to go right back to my profile commands. Go to profile. I'm going to do uh, update profile and before I do this I want to get back to my global scale factors. Let me grab that before I forget and I'm going to set those all to a scale factor of 1. 
because the name symbology already accounts for the size of the pipe. So what I want to do is turn on a display of a crossing feature that's in my existing ground DTM. I'm going to identify which feature I want to display. I'll just dynamically select it. It identifies the particular pipe. When I select apply, slide this dialog out of the way, I can see that pipe is now displayed here in view number two. If I wanted to see that pipe as if it was projected back onto my reference line, and again it's going to do it perpendicular to my reference line, I can go to projected features, display on, select which surface it's in, again identify the feature that I'm interested in, and I select apply, close out, go back look at my profile. Now I can see that pipe as if it was projected onto my profile. Now the nice part about this is inroads is intelligent enough that if I hover on it and I have the surfaces in memory I get flyouts. It tells me what the pipe is, the diameter and all the uh, feature attributes about it. Those displayed features in the profile can also be annotated. Before we do that let's bump up our um, scale here. I'm just changing global scale factors for all. And if I go back to my task menu, I can get to profile and annotate profile. And we have some options here um, if we want to project and uh, annotate line segments or points, however that works. You know, not however it works, whatever you select to annotate. There's the feature that will be annotated. And we have different categories here for the points if I want to annotate annotate the elevation and center line station and maybe even the uh, offset you know we can annotate that on these projected points so if I zoom into this view here we can see the annotation that that goes with that as well as the center line um, and both ends of the pipe if I decide that I want to annotate the line segments I can also say what is the horizontal length and maybe the slope on that pipe I hit apply again and it re-annotates and if I zoom in here a little bit and maybe just move things around a little bit. Might be a little bit more readable. We have text on top of text. But it does annotate the true length and slope of the pipe, not the graphics that are displayed in the uh, view. So it goes back to the feature itself. So that's it for this month's tip. Thank you for watching.